lost the <laughs> his name. <laughs> and uh, the title of, of, of this keynote is, uh, I also learned how to say the package name, is <laughs> join, yet another package for automation of journal typesetting. Up to you, Tom. Yeah, okay, thank you. Well, so that's it. Yet another package for, for automation of journal typesetting. And well, first for the name, my nickname on Stack Exchange is Yo. So it's, it's a mixture of Yo and Join. Join for joining the articles. And well, here's the readme of the, of the, of the article on, on GitHub, the, of, the, of, the of, the, of the style on GitHub. And well, the thing is, you need to compile your, I mean, I'm a typesetter of a journal. And you need to compile your issues assign page numbers and volumes and, and all this stuff. And it turns out that I have managed to make my tools for that. But they are a complete mess between tech, auxiliary files of nonsense names, uh, bash scripting, some other scripting, this, that, then DOI involved here and there, you know, sort of really bad thing. So after working for seven years or six years, in the industry, I decided, okay, let's, it's time to change this. And the main reason for me to change this was you need to collaborate. You, can, you, you will not be here forever. My workflow for, for, works well on this machine. I'm not even sure if it works on a, another Linux machine. I have never tested, so if this machine crashes, maybe the next issue of the journal will never be issued. So, you know, these are all sort of these things, little things that make you think, you should have some nice tool that does all the job for you. Or well, not all the job, but that helps you with the job. And that's the attempt here. So first one thing, okay, that's, that's the article. Uh, that's the, sorry, that's the package. Uh, if you check the comments, then you will see that there is a lot of comments from yesterday. I hope it's clear. Comments on July 20, 2018. And then the previous comments are June 22, 2016. So I have abandoned the work for quite a while. And this conference made me like get back to it and move it forward. So thank you for organizing the conference because maybe, <laughs> you know. Um, so that second thing, third thing is, okay, um, also on the GitHub, there is the objectives. And I will try to explain the objectives and then I will show how it works. And well, maybe this works. Wait, give me a second. Okay, no, it doesn't work well because it goes the overflows, that's too bad, okay. But I hope you can really read it at least somehow. Okay, so first thing, allow journals issue similar things, whatever, conference proceedings, to be compiled by a single run. You run one thing and it happens and it does everything you need. That's the goal. You need the articles to be processed for, in, in different ways. The online version has some copyright transfer or copyright whatever at the beginning. In the print, you don't need this. It's at the beginning of the issue. The online version is color. The print version is black and white, so you need different figures maybe for each version because the black and white figure will, will not be the black and white version of the online figure. <coughs> Red and blue will be dotted and checkered or whatever, right? Uh, Provided as a package and not a class, so you can include it in your class, make them work together. I mean, fully expo three with as little external tools as, as possible. So this is the list that I use. I am. I truly hope that it's complete. Basically, PDF include. Okay, you will manage PDF files. ZRF for correct page numbering. That's always can be complicated current file for absolute paths because I need it somewhere in the process. Good modularity, still working out of the box. So you install it, you, you, you make some basic setup, it works, then you can build upon it and make your process complete. Consecutive page numbering between issues, if possible automatic. That's an extra feature that doesn't work yet. DTX for documentation to some extent. Okay, parallel processing of the articles, if you have a multi-core uh, computer and you have 280 articles, uh, then it's a waste of time to make them in series. You want to use all four cores for that. Um, so that's a nice feature that works in my current process and doesn't work in this one because it's difficult to do. And um, 
Okay, one that you cannot probably understand now, but basically I'll allow the journey from tech to PDF be any that exists. There is at least four of them, like Dwips and whatever tools are there. Hello, each article can have his, its own tool. We will see that it works. And different configurations, like I said, offline, online, proofreading versions that have number starting, page numbering starting from one for all the articles, uh, and so on. All different th things. Okay, idea for UI that's not interesting now. So that's it. So let's see how it works. So this, I hope you can see it again. This is my folder with the, with the, with the journal issue. So I have there the, the style file, the class file. I will show how it looks like. It's not very long. And some main tag file. And for each of the articles, I will have a subfolder. And that's the only fixed thing, basically, in the whole process, that this has to be done this way, and there is no way around. And OK, and in the folder, again, you need the class. And it can be the same class for the issue and for the, for the articles. But it need not be. It's up to the, the, to the person who sets it up. Again, you need the style file. Needless to say, OK, let's open the issue now and let's see what happens. So just how it looks like if you make a minimal setup. This is the, the tech file for the issue, document class, issue test class, volume number or something useful, right? Then some, some join, join gibberish, join gibberish. Uh, begin document, title pages, colophon, forward, whatever, contents, list of articles. If you compile this and nothing bad happens, then what you get is the title page. Ignore all text in red. That's meant seriously. That's debugging code. I mean debugging text. Then you have the colophon, whatever information you want to put there. The forward, the contents, which are empty just now. Nice. I want to add an article. So let's do that. Join at article in folder called AAA. You see, AAA is the name of the folder, not of the tech file. The tech file can be named differently. Because the author uses some strange names and he insists with well, whatever. I don't care, right? I don't need to care. I don't have to care. I don't want to care. So let's try it now. Uh oh, something bad. The article AAA has no file AAA dot slash whatever some metadata hit missing. So we go back to the article. And obviously there is no metadata file. You see that there is only the tech file basically just now. So let's just compile the article as it is. OK, it opens and creates an article which is called How Great I Am by Me, Abstract, This is Absolute Latin Gibberish and Lorem Ipsum. Whatever, doesn't matter now, right? Um, OK, still no file.join. Because this is the way how the author <coughs> compiles. He doesn't have any idea about join or whatever. He doesn't even need to install my package. He needs to only have the class file. So what do you do? OK, this is in an issue. Right? Now you need the join file, obviously, the style file. OK, again. Now there is a, a, a join. I'm curious what is in, what's inside. Oh, no, not good. OK, let's open it with TechWorks. That could be better. This is what's in the file. It has zero pages, something wrong. Doesn't matter now. First page is one. Directory is called AAA. Job name is called not called AAA. There's the, there's the tech file name. I don't know what else. The title, author whatever metadata you need there. OK. So now let's compile the issue again. Here we go. Issue contents on page one, how great I am by me. If you go next, how great I am by me, just something's wrong, right? This is page four. This is page one. That's not correct. So the text, the latex, Typical thing is try more two more times, right? <laughs> <laughs> so let's try two more times. Nothing happens. Still nothing. Oh. That's too bad. So the trick, OK, now I have to manually, manually do something. I will compile again the article. OK, now it's page five in the article. So let's compile again the issue. Now it's page five in the issue and even page five in the contents. So that's good. But that wasn't automated, right? 
So far, so good. And this would work. I could add, be adding articles pretty well, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't be automated, right? So here where the second, I mean, this is sort of the first part, get the page numbers right. Yeah? But the second part is to do this automatically. And for that, OK, let's ignore you know, metadata now. Something which is called join shell. OK, I, I should have commented this one. I won't need this one. Let's go back. I told the package that the article in front of AAA is text PDF LaTeX. But if you see, this is something which I really call a shell. Because it really does work like a shell. It has its own instructions, shell style. Currently, nothing happens. OK, there should be some end chain shell. OK, it's not down here, down here. OK, that's good. So let's tell it that the PDF LaTeX article should be compiled using PDF LaTeX. So this says, for each article which has the tag PDF LaTeX, use the engine PDF LaTeX. So now I compile the main, the main document only, still the correct page number. Now you can say that I'm cheating because it was there before. So let's add another ar article, right? Yeah, but, uh, but you commented out article in your document. Uh, what? No, no, no. You commented at join. You commented join it, it's, it's still there. It's still there. So let's an add another one, for example, this one. Now obviously that one had an issue in the, in the, in the, in the preamble. Now the page numbers are not so correct. It should be, I mean, the next page is five and not one. And the table of contents shouldn't say seven. Yeah. They should say five. So again, now the trick with compile multiple times. Still not correct. Once more. Still not correct. Something's bad. I'm not sure what. <laughs> so let's see what I'm doing wrong. I'm really not sure now. Ah, OK, it's not there. It's just. So there was some, some, some auxiliary files forgotten from before. So let's try it now. Once, still not good. Now this should be correct. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yeah. ten empty page, because somewhere it's written that each article starts on a page, which is a switch you can enable or not. You can it or you, you want it or you're not, you don't, don't. that depends on how, who you are. OK, so this, this, this is the, the article that should be on page 11, and that's correct. OK, what's happened now? So 9, empty page 11 is the next article. And in the table of contents, 5 and 11, correct page numbers. Everything good. And you have indices, right, for offering them? You can do, I mean, that's stuff that you cannot do in this version. But you have all the data you need for that. That's the important thing. So currently, I don't do that. And it currently doesn't allow, but I mean, this is a very preliminary version, as you will see as I uncomment the features, that there is a lot of features that work only in Linux currently, because, well, you will see. So let's just add some other things. OK, articles from Saigon, don't, I don't know if you know the tool. If, if not, then it's, it's a homework. It's a homework for you to Google these six letters. Put your name in and hit enter. It's very useful if you need to get some, some bibliometrics boosted in your science. You. And you are doing computer science, then this is very good. You just need some pay to publish whatever in the end. I don't know where these things are actually <laughs> held. You know, it works. There is a whole story around it. This YouTube video of the talk they gave. It's a randomly generated article. So, well, you will see the contents. But anyway, the article uses EPS figures. Mm -hmm. And now I can use PDF later with EPS figures, but if I use PS, PS tricks, that gets tricky, so on. So let's stick to the fact that it's in, that you need standard LaTeX, PSPD, or VIPs, and PS2 PDF. This looks OK. In issue, test class, input encoding, I don't care. Title, author, OK, there is everything. So. Let's just go to the issue and add this article and tell it, OK, the tag is LaTeX PS2 PDF. So you need three things, right? LaTeX, OK, let's add it. You need VIPs, OK. You need PS2 PDF, OK, why not? So let's see if it works. Uh, and to go in the order you uh, put in the engine, right? Uh, I, I will re reply immediately. 
Okay, still not good. Okay, now it looks correct. Believe me that it's really 23, the, the third page number. Um, you call, I mean, the order of calling is that each of these lines gets called only once on all the articles that are there correctly. So the calls for, if I have multiple articles that need these three lines, it would first call LaTeX on all three of them, then call Vips on th all three of them, and then call PS2 PDF, which is not optimal. But we all know by scripting, if you really need this that often, you make one script that makes all three calls at once. Because that's easier to debug if something gets wrong, right? That's the problem. OK, so it works. One last thing, of course, why wouldn't this one work? <laughs> sure, so I have another article which uses, which uses Arara. Everything is OK. Arara PDF LaTeX shell, yes. OK, that's, that should be fine. Let's just try it. Now it will be, get a bit longer, the compilation. Arara starting, it takes a while. It's not the fastest tool in the world. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and it says 111 because of some previous metadata. Doesn't matter now. It, trust me, it works. Here is the article, um, including a colorful figure, right? This is actually from Wikipedia directly, the article. Um, okay, so that's still not what I would li like. That's still. There's a couple of things missing. And OK, one of them is indexing. That's not done at all, besides table of contents. But even the code for table of contents is actually, well, no, where is it? OK, list of articles, which is defined somewhere in the class. So let's open the class and see how it's defined. By the way, the class itself, as you see, you see it has 120 lines which is not much, I would say, for all that it can do. Um, and somewhere in this is, make title I don't look for, what I look for. How was it called? List of articles. List of articles. OK, new document command, list of articles. Uh, section issue contents, join for each, which takes all the articles wherever you are in the code, just processes them, and some things are predefined. So first page is the first page. Uh, and then meta calls all the metadata you can input, and it's called just metadata. So meta title by meta author, that's it. Of course, you all see the dirty trick I have here for, for dealing, with, dealing with the case that there are no articles. So just forgive me, right? <laughs> Because if there are no articles, then it will tell the missing oh, item yeah. stuff. You know, okay, it's just a dirty trick now. You could you could fix it quickly, but okay, that's all of the class, and yeah, well, it's all in X plus three. Okay, but I'm still not satisfied. I want more. I want all my PDF files in, to be in one, one folder. After the compilation, I want to have it in one folder. I upload it to some repository and tell the managing editor, here you have your PDF files, or whatever, it doesn't matter. OK, let's do that. Create a sub-article, sub-subfolder, all PDFs. Remove all files that may, might have been in the folder. OK, no, that's, that's not the right line. The right line is somewhere in the bottom, sorry. So it will not fit. And then for each article, copy. The file from the dot slash article, which is name of the folder, slash job name, which is name of the file, dot PDF. And I don't care how the author named the file. I want the folder to be the identifier, so why not? All PDFs, article PDF. So I never care how the, if, if all the articles have the same name of the tech file, that's fine with me. Yeah. So they are really completely independent in this sense. Uh, okay, that's, I'm still not satisfi satisfied. Because I want my color and, and black, black and white version, for example. OK, now I will do a lot of things, things at once. First, you can even run the main issue itself from inside with some setup. So you can create two copies of the, of the, of the main PDF file immediately. 
Basically, in the end, what will happen? At the beginning, it seemed like that the main PDF file will be the important file. But if you dig in, then you realize that the fact that I call it from the main, main issue tech file is basically not interesting to me. Because I will all I want should be in the shell and not something that is generated by the end of the whole file. So OK, I can do this. And then I can do go script, take the there's a suffix dash two, so it's job name dash two. B, black and white should be the output file. Conversion gray, you all have seen this, I suppose this is typical ghost script way to convert to black and white. Here's the input job name dash two PDF. You have to input dev null to it to work correctly. And so sort of strange stuff, okay. Then of course I want these two files to be in my all PDFs folder. Because I want everything in my all PDFs. That's why it's called all PDFs. So this should, this should work as well. Let's see how long this takes. In between we can uh, sing some songs or whatever. Now this is ghost script, page 30. Okay, now, yeah, yeah, good. This is not what I'm interested in. That's the main file. I don't care about that one. My issue, black and white. There was the color for figure, right, somewhere. Good to go. But I mean, if you want it, I, I hope it starts to be clear that you could use a different figure. You could tell the article through some metadata. Now use a different version of the figure that is already black and white. And then use another version of the figure that is not black and white. So I don't have this one ready, but I have another one ready. So I will show how that one works. Let's close things we don't need. The articles are not interesting anymore. The class maybe, but OK. And that's one last thing that it can do now. OK. So I end the shell. I change the method metadata, and I will explain how I change it. And begin another shell, and do again the, the call of all the, all the things. But this could, you, can make, you can make a macro that you repeat of this, of course. You can, if, if your macro is expandable, then the shell doesn't know what you did if it was. So this can be a block of just auto run all in genes. Your macro that you create doesn't matter, right? OK, so what I did here is. Before the first shell, I have is proofreading is zero, so I set some flag for the articles. Here I sell, set the flag to one, and repeat basically the same process. Just after the first process, if you check, I call the main file from within itself. A bit dangerous, you have to be careful what you do, but I am careful, hopefully with the suffix dash two, and I do all the stuff, and I get my black and version copy. In the second one, in the end, I, each of the articles gets propagated into my folder. So let's see what this one does. It will take even longer, because there is twice processing of all the articles now, but only once go skip, and that's the slowest part. My experience is that if you compile the whole issue and you need a black and white copy, the ghost script is the slow one. So let's see, okay, this is the folder all PDFs. So this one should be the black and white standard version, looks so. Yeah, okay, there was a color figure. Yes, okay, this is standard black and white version. And this one, this is the article itself, it's in color. And it has this very ugly proofreading version marks on bottom, which I really use to make authors not to publish the proofreading version ever. Because they know to do it. And they are lazy enough not to remove these marks. And they don't know how to do it. So they don't use this version. They wait a couple of days for the final version. And they are that fast with their day proofreadings. So I really do this, and it's a bad trick on the authors, but it works. Um, so you see that I can do a lot of different stuff. And that's all because I don't care about my whole, my, my main document. All that happens is contained in my shell. And that's the useful part. And then the rest of the, of the class is really just some, I would say, metadata ping pong between the journal, between the issue and the article. So the article, the issue says, I am called this way. The article says, thank you, I have this many pages. The issue says, okay, I have collect to collect all the page numbers from all the articles, and I will tell you your page number. OK, it's this one. OK, this is my new version with the correct page numbers. 
And you know, this is the sort of metadata ping pong that I mean. And that's all that the class does, basically. So metadata ping pong and sort of the shell, which itself has a lot of features. And OK, before I finish, there is two more things I want to, to do. One is show you the style file, just to see how approximately it looks. I mean, OK, maybe not the style file, maybe better the PDF, right? So it's really like a I mean, key value interface for everything. Um, and then, yes, there is the meta metadata stuff. <laughs> OK, well, that's, that's not probably very interesting. Yeah, the shell, um, you can make the shell ignored. So if you have like multiple production versions, you want to switch between them, you just add the, the, the key value ignore. And it will just ignore all the, all the run for each and run and auto run or whatever. So that's these all things you can do. OK, OK. Uh, so last thing. Now, in some sense, I'm done because it works. But I'm not, because it works only on Linux, right? So now what I need, and maybe it exists, and I don't know, is stuff like mkdir slash p. Well, v is not necessary, but OK. The v's can be omitted. But especially ghost script, I have no idea whether it really works this way on, on Windows. I know that there are some problems with it, but maybe not. Um, so this is the sort of stuff that's missing for me. I can do this on Linux, but I'm quite sure that if I run this on Windows, it will not run. OK, Joseph raises his so hand. It's just, so it's a it's stack for package, so you can pick up the stack form, and then you just have to have the appropriate. Yes. So, so yeah. you, just need, you just need to abstract commands okay. for those operations. OK, I would like someone to do this. Yeah, I'm the cross platform adding bits and pieces person, I guess. I mean, you know what I mean. I really mean that I would really, really use slash cross-platform, cross the command is cp, and the first argument is this one, the second argument is this one, and it uses cp on Linux, copy.exe on Windows, I don't know what. Also, I'm pretty confident that tech always uses single slashes for, for directory separation at all cases. There's some, some, someone saying no. Because I, what I really do is that I pass full path names at some moment to get the directory names. Because the problem is that sort of this file not called aaa.tech needs to know that it's in the folder aaa. So that's the information I need. And I do it by getting the full path from recorder. So I need the recorder active on the PDF later, later, Z later, whatever. And I just expand the last thing, which is not empty or single dot or something in the, in the path. That's all, it, all, all I do. So this is one thing that is not so, sort of, I, I tend to believe that it works, but I'm a Linux person, so I have no idea. So that's the second thing with, next to the, to the missing commands, that I'm not sure how it works. Probably it's something that is not so interesting to other people, so I'm OK with having this one, that one inside. But I really think that it would be useful to have a, let's say, shell support, true sh shell support for shell scripting that is cross-platform and easy to use, but which I can, I am willing to contribute to the Linux part, but I think that the architecture of such a thing has to be thought well thought because it's not really super simple. For example, you need to care about ar arguments and spaces in arguments. You know, all this sort of stuff should be done in some way. So currently, no spaces in argument, no, no underscores in arguments. I should have should put a big warning in the in the in the in the documentation that spaces and underscores are, are, are naughty. You know, so that's the thing. I think that's basically all I wanted to tell you. Um, I'm not sure if anything is missing. I think no. I think I told the most important set all the important stuff. Yeah. Well, there is some couple of more options for for stuff like. Here somewhere you can set whether it's open right or not, and this all w w works somehow. You can also set the first, first page number, but manually for each issue. Yeah. However, one thing that's interesting, the I use two different different suffixes for my files: join one and join, which means that basically you can run the join.sty file on two different consecutive levels of directories. And it should settle up. 
So somehow this could work that you, I, have never I, ha I haven't tested, but it's the way I would, I would like to do it, that the issues don't communicate between each other, but they have the volume about them done with the same, same platform, in the same platform that handles this. But I'm not, I'm not sure if I can do that. I have never tested. So that's sort of an open thing currently. So well, thank you. <laughs> Tom, thank you. Um, while I'm, I'm taking the, the microphone there, I, I want to make a comment uh, about... Uh, the slowness about of your program, right? <laughs> 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 uh, yes. uh, about spaces and file names. Spaces and file names is what ruined Arara 3.0. I had a lot of complaints, a lot of bug bugs because of users using spaces in their yeah. file names. Okay, my comment is here the person that runs my package is in control. So he is like, there, is, there will be at the best tens of users all around the world and not tens of thousands, so I don't need to care. Because tens of people can read the documentation, tens of thousands, and they have to anyway, <laughs> because it's not, easy to, it's not that easy to set up. It's not difficult, but not that easy. You know, <laughs> So I think that this is the difference in some sense. You put a big warning there. <laughs> okay, that gives me an additional comment to make. So the first thing is, I think I have to quote David again here. So don't read the doc documentation, bad things happen. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was more of, a, I was gonna make really a comment, which is I've thought for a while for Expo 3, we probably wanna pick up some of the if platform kind of ideas because there are places you need to know that. And the abstract, some abstraction of basic file operations. So it would probably be good to work out what kind of interfaces make sense. So we should probably talk about that. Okay. It's, really a com it's more of a comment that you know, that kind of thing can be done, at least to some extent, and it's just a question of, of thinking about it. It's a very nice, nice setup, though, um, really, is my main comment. It's quite okay. clever. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, I, have, uh, I have a question and a comment. Okay. Uh, my comment is, uh, it looks like one thing you did not automate is the number of runs. And if you have uh, BIP tech or BIP LaTeX processing, and if you have cross refs, you cannot predict the number of runs beforehand, and it's too bad uh, to do it manually, so uh, you probably would want to put something like log analyzer and decide whether to run it again. Uh, uh, this is the comment. And my question uh, is, okay, I am a dumb uh, class writer. And I usually what I do for a publisher, I write a class for the publisher's uh, articles and the class for cover, which is basically the issue, what we should be in the table of uh, articles and so on and so forth, like the one I talked about. So my question is, can you make very simple hooks, which I could just plug into my classes and then you would be, uh, I would be able to run it. So, and uh, have some documentation that I can put it there. Ah, okay. Okay, well, so, to, uh, first, thanks for the comment. That's a very good one that I haven't considered. Now, let me just reduce the font size a bit so that you, the, the lines don't, don't look so badly. I think you will see it anyway. Ah, come on, that's what, that wasn't the thing I wanted to do. Yeah, that's exactly what you need to do which is ridiculous, but okay. So this is a bit smaller. Okay, that's the class. Let's go through it. Some, t some, some setup, setup, process keys, options. You need some, some key well in interface anyway. Footer volume number, that's something you need anyway. Now, issue, that's the part for the issue. So that's something, this is all the code that's in the class that's issue specific, what you see now. There is set volume, set number, which just set the volume and number of the article of, the, of yeah. the issue. And then there is the list of articles, which uses the join for each. And that's yeah. all you sort of need to do in the class for the issue. Then there is the shell stuff in the issue file itself, which I separated here this way, but you can separate it in any other way. So this is maybe, there is a lot, there is, there is a bit more to it. It's in the file myissue.tech. For the article part, that's much easier because this is really all of it. And there is even more stuff that you need because you have this volume number, then you have this proofreading stuff which is specific to my approach. And then you, well, I mean, this is not interesting. And I think that really this is basically 
Okay, yes, this is basically all because how I change the, the page number, which is the only thing you basically have to communicate, yeah. is using begin docu yeah. add begin yeah. document in the style file. Yeah, you so probably want to make some, some generic building blocks I can use because this is not yet. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. I mean, not, this is a generic enough. It's yeah, not it's product. not. It, I, I, as I said, this works. And I'm joking that I'm finished. I'm not finished, but it's just that it works. Okay. And it does what I need. I just want to say that I loved it. It's perfect for me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I work with Windows, but I, I'm willing to, to have a machine uh, running Linux just to, to do that. Because it's, it's very important to have this kind of uh, automation. And uh, you don't have to worry if it, uh, um, headers and footers are all the same number and things like that. And it, it, it just goes and uh, saves everything in, in black and white and color. I think it's wonderful. OK, thank you. It wouldn't be Frank without a question. <laughs> uh, uh, just thinking about it um, right now, I mean, what you showed were articles starting at new pages. And I, I was thinking about, oh, yeah, and what about something like, say, Tugboat, where articles sometimes start in the middle of the <laughs> <laughs> um, OK. And I will explain, explain to you the, the reason. The reason is that someone wants to call version 3 of MHChem, and someone wants to call version 4 of MHChem. And someone's called chem macros, and someone's called whatever. They use the same with slash CE. Uh, <coughs> That's why I do this approach. You know, probably combine the, 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 this package combine, which does the other way, goes the other way around. But then you need to unify the preamble. And that's such a painful thing. Yeah, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that your approach wouldn't allow for that. I mean, uh, OK, you would need even more metadata. Because yeah, end of page, uh, like left space on page and stuff like that. You can do that, yes. I just w was wondering whether you it's not necessary for your current work, it's not there. Yeah, and, but actually the thing is, well, you can communicate as the author of the style file any metadata. So if you decide to, decide to communicate these two things, then the only thing is that it doesn't communicate between the articles, consecutive articles, it communicates between the article and the issue. So this is something that I haven't considered, but can be considered. I would say that it's modular enough to allow this thing. If I got it right, uh, you are including the articles with uh, PDF pages. That means you lose the links. There are no links, no hyperhive links, no? Huh? Yes, and I will try to explain why I don't care. Because I publish the PDFs of the articles and not the PDF of the issue. The PDF of the, the issue is the thing I sent to the printer, yeah. so I don't care about links. And I, I'm not sure if it is, this, this is a standard approach, yeah. but I think that most, okay. most journals publish these, these single articles, so they don't care about links in the issue. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? So thank you very much, Tom. Welcome. <laughs>